new product and, and the new technology that we have. There's a lot of interesting things um, that we think make it worthwhile for discussion, and, and let me take you through some of those now. I'll start first with hardware. Right, so what's under the hood and what have we upgraded? The first thing that is the most important is that we've gone from 20 nanometer class band to 10 nanometer class band. We've got a brand new controller from the MDX moving to the MEX controller, which is actually 33% faster than the previous generation. So this allows us to really increase performance, and I'll show you some of that data in a minute. We've doubled the DRAM. So it's up to a gigabyte now on some of our largest drives, up from 512 megabytes before. And of course, we bring this all together with upgraded firmware and our latest advanced signal processing. So under the hood, you know, starting from a hardware perspective, we've made a whole host of improvements. The first thing that those improvements allow us to do is to expand our lineup. So from our 500 gigabytes, we're now adding a unique SKU at 750 gigabytes, all the way up to a full terabyte drive, which has been long requested by a lot of people everywhere. And it's important to note that this is not compromised. This is not a 960 gigabyte drive or 980. This is a full 1,000 gigabytes of usable space. And so with that lineup, we're focusing on three themes for the 840 EVO. Speed, reliability, and making the entire process from beginning to end easier than it's ever been before. So let me first start with speed. And there's two areas here that I'd like to highlight. The first is the result of our hardware evolution. So when you look at our random performance of the drive, we've been able to provide a responsiveness boost. So this data here shows 840 performance on the left, the new 840 EVO performance on the right for all of the capacities. And this is the RAM performance at QDEPT 1. The reason we're focusing on QDEPT 1 is because we know that most of the workloads, most of everyday applications occur at very low QDEPTs. So it was very important to improve this as much as possible because this is what provides responsiveness, responsiveness that you can feel. So you see that we've been able to get that all the way up to 10,000 IOPS across the board for QDEP1. And because the QDEP1 performance is better, that follows over and rolls into QDEP32 performance. And you'll see that that has also been upgraded. So what does that look like? So that's actually a 27% improvement in QDEP1. So we've gone, again, from 7,900 all the way to 10,000. This is our rated spec for some of the highest capacity drives. We've done tests that take it over 11,000. So we know that you know this is a very real score. And as I mentioned, this is a result of our hardware evolution. The new controller and its faster clock speed is a key enabler of this performance. But also, we've increased the amount of hardware automation technology in this drive. And what that means is there are more and more commands that are being processed directly in the controller, in the hardware itself not in firmware, and because of that, we're able to increase, increase performance. <laughs> so that's performance on the random side. If we move to sequential, the next area that we've improved is that we've accelerated writes dramatically. We know on the read side that at 500, 540, we're near the maximum of what's possible. But looking at the 840, we saw very clearly that there was an opportunity improve on sequential writes. And that's exactly what we've done with the 840 EVO, coming up all the way to 520 on the large drives, and even 410 on 120 gigabyte. So if you look at that, that's actually 1.6x on the large drives, a doubling of performance on the sequential writes, with 250 and 3x on the 120 gigabyte. I think that's actually kind of special, especially if you look at the 120 gigabyte. Most of the time, when you're looking at this capacity, it is a compromised drive, because with anybody who has to make an SSD in this size, you'll notice that there's always a drop in performance, and we think with our new ability to accelerate the writes, we bring that up so that it's an uncompromised performance for the consumer. Now, enable, in order to be able to make all of these improvements, we actually had to fundamentally rethink how we write data to the drive. And 
One thing I'd like to introduce today is our new TurboWrite technology. Let me start with a simple example of how this works. For example, let's take our one terabyte 840 Evo. We know that at its core, this is still based on 3-bit MLC. Naturally, it has some physical limitations, and those limitations are when you're doing sequential writes, it takes a little bit longer. So that extra, those extra bits, that second and third bit, takes a little longer to program to the cell, a little bit longer to error correct and validate the integrity of that data. So how do we overcome that? What we did is we created a higher performance buffer within the SSD itself. So in terms of space, it's 36 gigabytes of space in terms of 3-bit MLC terms. But in order to accelerate the writes, we treat it not like that, but we treat it instead of 3-bit, we treat it as simulated SLC. So we only use that first bit. And what that does is it allows us to write much, much faster. So when there's a sequential write, what will happen is we will turbo write to that buffer at our accelerated speeds. And then, when the host is idle, we'll transfer that data to the main SSD storage area. That's what OCC does. Yeah. Yeah. So what are those speeds? Right? So you saw those specs. So with TurboWrite, we have up to 520 megabytes per second on the large drives. So as I said, when you write, it's going to first turbo write at those speeds. And then the after turbo write speeds is the performance that you'll expect when it's transferring it to the main storage or if you exceed the size of the buffer. So that brings me to the next important point, that because it is a buffer, it has a natural physical limit. Right? So we had to very carefully pick the size of this. On our large drives, it was not a problem. Six, nine, 12 gigabytes. That's a very big buffer that in most scenarios, most use cases, you're never going to exceed. So the trick was for the more mainstream SKUs and the more affordable price points, so 120 or 250 gigabytes, how do we make sure we don't penalize anybody who's interested in SSD but is perhaps not ready to go to some of the largest drives? So we chose very carefully, and we did a lot of tests to figure out what would be the optimal size. And we decided that with three gigabytes, that this buffer would be large enough for all everyday performance scenarios. Now what that means is for most scenarios, and for most people, most of the time, they're gonna have accelerated performance. So that is our focus on speed. The next area is around reliability. And we define this in many different ways, not just focus on three examples. You've already heard, I think, probably everybody on the stage talk about our advanced signal processing. And really, this is our way of trying to capture some of the, the black box magic, you know, the in-house, end-to-end integration knowledge that we have that enables us to bring such fantastic and such reliable drives to the market. So let me show conceptually what the challenge is that we're dealing with, or as I like to call it, the laws of physics. As we progress, from larger to smaller and smaller geometries. This is the challenge that we have with NAND. Right? It fundamentally becomes more difficult to provide endurance. And we know that consumers, businesses, everybody expects a higher level of endurance from an SSD. So conceptually, our ability to fill that gap and to provide a drive that is reliable and has unquestionable endurance is because of all of that in-house knowledge in our advanced signal process. And what that allows us to do is even though we're progressing to new technologies and introducing new drives, we can still offer the same three-year warranty that we had before. <laughs> and in fact, um, in our internal testing with the A40 Evo that's happening right now, we've tested to over 3,700 PE sites. Well, that's still going on at the moment, um, and you know, we look forward to figuring out what that true lifespan is, but uh, you know, hopefully it's not for a long time. The next area is around power consumption, and particularly idle power consumption. Because the drives are so fast, they spend most of their time waiting, so the power that they draw while they're in that idle state is the most important. And with Evo, we, 
continue to offer the same ultra-low power, power consumption as we have with our previous drives. And especially if you compare it to hard drives, you know, it's a factor of 10 or 11. The third point, then, is something that we call dynamic thermal guard. This is all about protecting your drive, your data, and the SSD in extreme operating temperatures. So normally, the operating temperature should stay between 0 and 70 degrees Celsius. The orange line is what the SSD should normally do, right? So that's in terms of power and in terms of maintaining that temperature. However, when that temperature becomes high, it's a risk to the data. So the SSC and the controller, what it will do is it actually throttle the power going to the drive and manage the performance so that you can maintain a safe operating temperature. And then once that is resolved, the performance will return as normal. So that's our, our new dynamic, dynamic thermal guard. It's just another example of the umbrella of things that we consider under reliability. The final point, and I think we're going to take a short break after this and come back to it, is about making it much easier than before to access this technology. And this is from installation, to migrating your data, to managing the FCC, and making that as simple and seamless as possible. So after a short break, we're going to come back and talk about some of these solutions. So thank you so far, and see you again.